I have made an enormous raft of signings. Might be the most signings I've ever made in a transfer window, to be honest. It just kept coming. And welcome back to another episode and a brand new season of Rebuilding Bolton. If you've been enjoying it so far, as much as I have, drop a like on the video. That would be superb. I've been bloody loving it. Um, honestly, I didn't think we'd be as successful as we were with that tactical shape. And I think it partly comes down to just the sheer quality of players we had at hand, which is part of the reason I think the board wanted us to do so well. I think we may struggle a bit more this season. And I know there's potentially some changes I could make to improve that. But I also kind of want to just see what we can accomplish with what we currently have. However, I have made an enormous raft of signings. Might be the most signings I've ever made in a transfer window, to be honest. It just kept coming. In other good news, we did sell the Rob Holding clause. 4.88 million was what the clause was sold for in the end. It earned us, well, obviously we only got 10% of the transfer revenue retained, which is about £400,000, but it was enough for me to build a squad which I think could last us for a while, bring in some existing talent, bring in some free transfers, a couple of paid transfers too, and, re and one guy I'm very, very interested in. So we're going to be going through the ins, the outs, and there have been some outs as well, and then, well, we're going to get stuck into our first league game of the season in League one, I'm excited. You might notice the skin slightly different. I wanted a version of the skin that made the face pack pictures bigger. I think this one is a little bit too big, and I wish there was a way that we could make it a tiny bit smaller, because I feel like the picture's resolution is getting blurred slightly, and it's particularly noticeable on some of the Z-Gens as well. So it'd be nice if the panel was a little bit smaller. Is that like not like a mid-ground DF? Heck, I could probably figure out how to do that myself, to be fair. So I might have a look at that. In addition to that, um, we were looking for the board set initial budgets thing. That never happened. And I think the reason for that was we literally don't have a budget. Any budget we had, we had to generate ourselves. The board gave us no money, as you would have seen when it said budget for next season zero, which changed midway through the year, but whatever. Um, that might be why we didn't get the news article, because there was no budget for this season. The board are just like, yes, we expect you to achieve amazing things, but you can think again if you think we're going to actually try to support you in that. But we must now move on to the outs. A few of them, some loanies as well. So the first out is George Taft. He's gone to Shrewsbury Town for £67,000. I didn't think he was going to quite cut it with some of the players I was planning to bring in. I thought it was an opportunity for us to get some money and more importantly, some wages off the bill. So we took the plunge and George Taft has left to go to Shrewsbury. But for £67,000, it helped us get a little bit more cash. Not a lot, admittedly, like six grand. But it was more about the wages, if I'm honest. Adam Senior's nipped out on loan to Barnet for the season. Finley Hurtlocker has gone out on loan to Eastleigh for the year. I was thinking about potentially keeping him around, but he seemed to want to go out on loan, so I felt it was the right deal at the time. So off goes Finley. Jack Hickman has gone to Northampton Town on loan for a season, and he has got reasonably high wages for uh, what he actually is as far as his squad stays. So to get him out of the way for another year was, I think, a good sign. Similar situation with Liam Gordon, who was also on nearly £1,000 a week. He's gone to Torquay United for the season on loan, freeing up some space in the squad as well for other people, because we actually are only limited to 20 players in our squad. And the final loan out is Daniel Oyagoke, who came in from Arsenal in this summer on a free transfer, but I've now loaned him out to Sutton United because I didn't feel like we needed him immediately. And as always with these guys, if you have any nicknames for the players, for sure, drop them in the comments or in the Discord, link in the description, and of course, player rumours, my favourite part. So the first player to join us, of course, is Harry Murphy, uh, the guy that we signed from Kings Lynn Town. Now, you can see that the, he's readjusted his potential slightly to four stars, but that could still change. I still think he's developing quite nicely so far. He's only 17 years old, plenty of room for this lad to improve. I'm excited about what he could do for us maybe at some point. I wish we could show the um, player comparison, but there seems to be no way of putting it anywhere other than here, and I want the attribute graph because you guys love to see that normally. Next free transfer is Matthew Craig, an 18-year-old uh, midfielder from Spurs. Again, free transfer, low wages. I've been really trying to ham on this one. And as you can see, I think he's not a bad player. Six foot five, good passing, good tackling. Vision's a little bit on the shitty side, but he's got great jumping reach, as you can imagine. Good stamina. He's not too bad. And again, it's just one of those players that could potentially do something for us in the future. Could definitely play a bit part role, occasionally some cut performances. I like him. And again, for free, on a relatively cheap amount of money, I thought it was a bit of a no-brainer. Because he is not a bad box to boxer. He's not going to play for us now, but that's probably where he would go. And at six foot five, he definitely gives us a different area of sort of dominance. Next up on the list is Zidane Iqbal, a young Iraqi uh, central midfielder come from Manchester United. And again, same kind of situation, really, except I think he's slightly better. Um, he's a bit more of a playmaker than Craig is. But again, not too bad, really. When you consider their age, their room for growth, uh, he's not too bad to start with. 13 passing, 13 vision. Not too awful at 18. He may get some loan spells. I'm not really sure, but it was definitely worth bringing him in, getting him on a nice little contract and seeing what he can do for us over the next couple of years. At the very least, he could bang some goals in for our under 18 side, potentially. And the final one of these types of players is Callum Cisse, also from Spurs. Um, once again, 18 years old, 6'2", low wages once more. He's a bit of one of those players that you could sort of play him in many positions. And I mean, I still think that potentially he's a wingback, 
obviously we'd have to retrain him to play further up, but crossing and dribbling are solid. Great pace and acceleration, which is excellent for that type of stuff. His tackling's fine. Marking's fine. Positioning's de decent, actually. His work rate's solid. The only thing he's really lacking is his aggression and bravery aren't spectacular. And now on to some loanies and some paid signings. Now, obviously, you'll be aware that we got some loan players back from last season. I'll show you exactly who in a minute. Actually, I'll show you now because it's easier. Professor Brandon Fleming is back. You already knew that. Uh, Peter Chioso is also back, and you already knew that. And I also brought back Miles Pert Harris again. Originally, he turned down the loan offer, but then once it had expired, I offered him again, and he was able to come back. So that's nice. Pert Harris, I think he showed something towards the end of last season, and I'm intrigued to see what more he can offer for us on another loan spell this year. Obviously, we couldn't get Simeu back. Uh, I didn't want to get Richards, not Richards, uh, Elliot back. People like that wasn't too concerned about. But the first actual loan signing in is Xavier Simons, or Simons, or Xavi Simons. Um... I couldn't believe Chelsea let us loan this guy. For free! For free, I say. I could not bloody believe it. 18-year-old uh, on loan from Chelsea. This guy should be playing... I'm amazed that they let us have him. I, I, I saw him and I was like, I recognise that name. I recognise that name. Let's have a little look, because obviously Chelsea are our affiliate side. And I was just seeing if they had any players they'd let us have for free. And yes, they said yes. So we've got Xavier Simons or Simmons. Actually, someone let me know how to pronounce his name. Because it's one of those ones that looks really obvious, but I bet that's like Simons or something. Um, It's probably just Xavier Simons, isn't it? Next up, Carlo Ziga has joined us permanently from Chelsea. They released him at the end of the season, and I enjoyed his work for us last year. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and sign him up. Now, I was looking at Will Jaskalainen, um, but Crew wanted way too much money for him. And when I compared him, he wasn't actually as good as I thought he was. He's still good, but he was only a tad better than Ziga, and Crew wanted absurd money, considering they'd been relegated to League Two and we were coming up. The game seems to be a bit weird about that sometimes, where it, you're never quite sure when... It, even when I ticked over into the new season, where it's like, officially, you're in that league and they're in theirs, they still seem to treat you like you're in the division below them. So, yeah, and he was as well, as such, and that kind of made it difficult, which is a shame, because I really did want to bring him in. But second best for that was comfortably getting Carlo Ziga back, you know. Next up is Bryce Hosanna, who's coming on a free transfer from Bradford City, I think, or maybe it's Crystal Palace. No, it's Bradford City, isn't it? He was released, and, you know, I saw the pace, I saw the crossing and dribbling, good tackling, good positioning. He's just a solid player. Now, the one thing with... Oh, no, this could be a struggle for me to actually, actually try to find that button now. The one issue we do... Oh, it's here. So he is left-footed. Uh, sorry, he's right-footed, but he has a reasonable left foot, which is why I was prepared to take the plunge on him to potentially play him as that inverted wing-back role. We are training him there. No, normally I wouldn't do that, but for now, just to get him a bit more comfortable. The one downside we've got is this, and I will try to work in getting him rid of this one. Yeah. Zach Clough is back at Bolton, my friends, Zach Clough. Now, I don't know what Bolton's fans' opinions of Zach Clough actually are, whether he was well-liked at the club before he left, I'm not really sure. But when I saw him come up in the sort of being released by Nottingham Forest category, I thought, oh, I recognise that name as a Bolton player. Should we try and bring him back? And the fact that he only wanted two grand a week, I was quite impressed with that because, and this is the main reason I was interested in him, he's kind of solid across the board. Not spectacular, but solid. Can play through the middle and would do a comfortable job. Their decision's a bit lacking, right? But he can play on the right-hand side as a winger and would be completely apt there as well. And he could also play through the middle and do a wonderful job for us there too. The versatility that Zach Clough gives us is the main reason I was determined to bring him back to Bolton. We also brought in another backup goalkeeper uh, because, again, look at the money. This guy was released by Spurs. This is Kasper Kulowicz, who is a Polish... Uh, now, he may get Poland caps, so obviously this will move up to like 700 if he does. But to play backup to Carlo Ziga and have a guy of this kind of quality sitting behind him, we've really strengthened our goalkeepers. And they're both... This this is the cool thing. They're both our players. They're not loan signings. They're ours. So we've got Ziga and Kurilovic as our goalkeepers now, potentially to rotate around a little bit this season. There's plenty of potential in both of them. Next up is a loan signing. Akin Fameo. Remember him. I'm fairly certain I had him at Stockport, but I'm also fairly certain that he's way better this year than he was in Stockport that season. Uh, Nigerian, 22 years old, centre-back. You might notice we were struggling to struggle with centre-backs a little bit, so I needed to make sure we brought a couple in. This is what we've done. I think Akin Fameo I like him a lot. Next up is another centre-back. It's Robbie Cundy, who's coming on a free transfer from Cambridge United. Now, again, he's even he isn't on exactly large money. Now, he's not amazing, but again, free transfer, fills a couple of gaps. I think he's an improvement over what we had and on less money, which is very important. Once again, not comfortable on both feet, but better than some of the players we've had, you know? So pleasing, again, not the quickest. That's the one downside about Robbie Cundy, but he's still actually only 24. So... I'm not overly disappointed in him, to be fair. We also have Rodell Richards on loan from Tottenham. The reason I wanted him was because I saw he had some decent base stats for a striker, or attributes rather. But more importantly, he had really low wages. And that was the key for me. £350 a week is what Spurs wanted because that's his actual wage right now. So to bring in an extra striker for us to give us a bit of extra quality in there, a bit more backup to go with Doyle and Delfonso, I thought it was important to have a guy like Rodell Richards. So he's now joined us as well. It's good stuff. Now, 
two paid signings. The only two I've actually made, but they actually have cost us money. The first of which is Ramoni Critchlow Noble, who's coming on a free transfer. Oh, no, sorry, not a free transfer. It's cost us £32,000 from Huddersfield Town. Uh, 10k up front like the rest of it over the next three years. So it's basically cost us very, very little indeed. But I like this guy. Six foot tall, not stupid, stupidly quick, um, but marking of 11, tackling of 13, um, heading of 12. He's only 22, but he has 12 passing as well. Decent vision. I think, you know, he's, he could even play fullback for us, if I'm honest. I wouldn't want him to. But the other thing about him that I really like is the fact that he's actually not a bad libero. The only thing he lacks is the long shots. But our liberos don't really take long shots. As much as we have them on attack and that does encourage them to shoot more, they basically don't ever do it. This is Guy Porteous. Uh, he is a regen, 17 years old, from Hearts. Now, he has cost us £180,000. It's not all up front. It's like 90 up front and then the, the rest of it over the next three years again. The main reason is because I have. he is a very interesting talent. Like, great technique to start with, great agility. He's only 5'9", but he's got excellent pace, some really decent mentals on a few things as well, good dribbling, Good passing. Vision's not too bad as well. At 17, to have this sort of level of quality already, I was pretty amazed. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. And the fact that he's called Porteous reminds me of my Scotland save too. So Guy Porteous, the regen, at 17, could genuinely feature for us in League One this season. I see no reason why not. And I'm curious to see how he does. Fairly professional personality. I am a big fan of this guy, and I'd be very curious to see what this guy can do for us long term. Not on large money, obviously, because he's so young. But I'm excited about what Porteous could be for Bolton this season. So we actually start away at Cambridge United hilariously of, uh, well, they were with us last season. So slight injuries to some players, but it's just this team looks so much better in many ways. I think I want to start Rodo Richards through the middle. Now, obviously, some players have had little injuries in preseason, which has not exactly enabled them the best in certain positions. Zach Clough's had an injury. There's a few players with little injuries that are needing to be worked on. But I just think we've got so much more depth in this team now. And that alone is worth a lot. Just being able to rotate around with players that can fill in positions and actually do a job for us is quite surprising. It may take us a few games to settle in. That's fine. Ah, yeah, I can't put um, Simons on the bench for this, but we will remove Kyoso then and bring in... Yeah, we'll bring in Hosanna instead of Kyoso on the bench. That way it fits nice in. Yeah, Hosanna's a good player anyway. Those of you that may have missed it in the uh, last actual video, the board are expecting us to get mid-table this season, I think. Or was it top half? It's actually quite nuts what they're expecting, considering the amount of money. Then again, we have had a bit of cash, but that wasn't because of them. That was because of me. Yep, we should be good. A lot of new players in this team, but still a lot of old faces in there as well that can hopefully do a job for us this year. Um, we've still got some transfer window left if I was to find another couple of players, but the budget's running a bit low now. My expectation for us this year is to stabilise. Now, obviously, the board want top half, I think, so we will have to sort of work towards that, and that's fine. Um, but there is still a good chance that you could actually still battle towards the top of the league if you put the right tactic together as Isgrove's in. He's got to pull this back for someone. Can he find the right pass? There's so many options forward. As Sarsovic puts it into the near post. Anthony Sarsovic, Cambridge nil, Bolton Wanderers won here at the Abbey Stadium. Sarsovic scores his first goal in League One. One of the things I was complaining about with Sarsovic in the analysis video is that he was one of the more underperforming players based on XG, so it's good to see him get off the mark early there. Look at the number of players we had surging forward into the box here on this counter-attacking play. Lovely stuff, and our first goal in League One is scored by Anthony Sarsovic. It would be nice to secure a win in our first game. Booty with a looping pass, and Isgrove and a good stop. Is that offside? No, it isn't. Mitov saved that. I mean, first 30 minutes has been all Bolton. It's been spectacularly good from us, actually. Booty again on the edge of the area, around the side for Pert Harris, and it's wide. I want to see a lot out of him this year. Now, to be fair, we would be expecting to come and win these sort of games, considering they are probably going to be one of the rivals down towards the bottom, potentially. So winning away at Cambridge, if we do have mid-table, top-half aspirations, is kind of almost required. Sarsovic, Pert Harris, great strike. Oh my goodness, Miles Pert Harris, what a finish that is. Edge of the box, he's bent it at home. We saw little glimpses of him towards the end of last season when we played him further forward, because often he played deeper and he really struggled to perform there. But I think this year he's going to own that shadow striker role potentially, along with Ali Crawford, of course, um, who's, I think, still got an injury. Lovely little ticky tacker on the edge of the box here. Per Harris, loads of space. Great strike, low bottom corner, 2-0. It's an exciting time to be a Bolton fan as Jones wins it now. I want to see what Rodo Richards can do. He's got a bit more mobility. Lovely ball through for Per Harris. He can get through again here. Go on, Miles. Show me what you got, son. Oh, it's a big save from the goalkeeper. What a start, though. This first half has been superb. Well, half time, and it's been dominance from Bolton. Absolute dominance. We did beat them here last season as well, I think. Oh, it looks like Hobbs might be getting a red card here. I just thought he was, didn't know he was on a booking. Is he gone? He is. Jack Hobbs is gone. Right, okay. Isgrove's had a slight problem with his wrist, so we're actually going to get Guy Porteous on at 17 for his Bolton Wanderers debut. I have high hopes for this lad. Um... It's just, it's interesting. He has an interesting set of attributes, really. Like, a, quite an interesting scatter. And I want to see if we can refine him a bit and make him into something quite interesting for us. But we'll see how he does. Put Harris again with tons of room. He's got to find the overlap from Fleming. He does. Men surging to the back post. So many men in the box. And finds Booty! Good block. 
patient build-up now from the lads. Porteous. Can he find a little pass on the side or go into the box himself, perhaps? He does. Oh, Guy Porteous goes straight through challenges and gets a good shot off. That was nice. So it looks like it's going to be Cambridge United nil, Bolton Wanderers 2. Very comfortable performance in the end against the team that obviously have been newly promoted with us. Um, but I think we've probably strengthened more than they have in the summer in many ways. And a strong performance overall. The red card obviously definitely helped us as well. Uh, Critchlow Noble was sensational. I'm going to call him RCN. Makes him sound like a news network. Uh, this just in. He's really good. I genuinely don't believe that we'll struggle in League uh, 1 this season. There's generally speaking, if you find yourselves in a good position in League 2... Unfortunately, with FM, you do find that no matter what you do, even if you were trying to make it more difficult, you still find that you tend to finish quite highly in League One in your first season. It just seems to be the case in most of the saves I've ever done. And I am genuinely trying to make it more challenging for myself by playing this batshit tactic, because I thought that would definitely... And I feel like there's definitely... We could... Trust me. I feel like we could make this way more efficient and it would become a bit boring. And I do understand that there's an element of like, you don't want to see me winning all the time, but you I don't want to deliberately make things bad as well, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to have fun and play some cool tactic and hope that maybe we can go all the way with it. So, next episode, we're going to come back and do Grimsby Town, who, amazingly, once again, were in the same division as us last year. So we're going to get a nice, easy start here, in theory, particularly since it's at home. And then we're going to come back after that and do Doncaster in the next video, too. Slightly easier start, slightly less compressed season this time around as well. So the rotation will definitely be needed, but perhaps not quite as essential as it was before. So, if you've enjoyed this episode and you're looking forward to the new season, and I hope you are, I think we've done a decent job transfer-wise this summer, drop a like, that'd be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be sick, too. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, oh, I also stream on Twitch, Tuesday Thursdays and at the weekends go for one or two and also with a new live stream channel as well so go follow that as well link in the description I'll see you guys tomorrow for some more of this goodness thank you so much for watching hold your gun capybara bye bye